Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good day around the world. I am Chief Engineer Joe Abogan. My video today is about how to carry out Continuous Machinery Survey or CMS of a ship, part two. Please click the subscribe button so that you will be notified on my next videos. Example on how to implement the total number of CMS items. For example, ship A was newly delivered on January 1, 2021. The total number of machinery survey CMS items are 250 items. So the first five year cycle is from January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2025. Usually for a newly delivered ship, there is no continuous machinery survey on the first year of the first five year cycle. That is from January 1 to December 31, 2021 this year, because all the machineries are new and the running hours are minimal. The machineries are all under guarantee claim to the makers. So there is only four years to conduct CMS survey that is from January 1 to December 31, 2025, that is four years. 250 survey items divided by four years equals 63 survey items each year. So for January 1 to December 31, 2022, 63 items to be surveyed. from January 1, 2023 to December 2023, 63 items. For December 1 to this, for this January 1 to December 31, 2024, another 63 items. And on the last year, on the first cycle, January 1 to December 31, 2025, 63 items to be surveyed. And January 1, 2026, or 250 survey items should have been surveyed if all chief engineers conduct survey as per schedule. Example on how to implement the total number CMS items. The second five year CMS cycle is will be from January 1, 2026 to December 31, 2030. There will be five years to survey the 250 items. 250 survey items divided by five years equals 50 survey items each year. 
from January 1 to December 31, 2026, for particular items surveyed. On January 1 to December 31, 2027, only 40 items were surveyed. January 1 to December 31, 2028, only 33 items surveyed. And on January 1, 2029 to December 31, 2029, only 25 items surveyed by the chief engineer. So on January 1 to December 31, 2030, 110 items left for survey for the last chief engineer on the second five year cycle. On January 1, 2031, all items 20, 250 should have been surveyed if all chief engineers conduct a survey as per schedule of 50 items each year. So on the above example, the chief engineer on ship A was not able to survey 50 items each year. So on the last years, there are 110 survey items left. The chief engineer on the last year is required to survey the 110 items remaining this is an example of bad implementation of survey items. Continuous machinery survey, CMS. Condition-based monitoring, CBM. Continuous condition-based monitoring CBM, example of applied condition-based monitoring techniques and methods. Thermal imaging can be used to monitor mechanical machinery for detecting uneven heat distribution caused by faulty bearings. It is also a useful aid in monitoring leakage from exhaust and steam systems, as well as ensuring insulation integrity of refrigerated spaces and furnaces. Thermographic imaging cameras can be used to scan the infrared emission from any surface and produce thermal maps of the scanned area. The complete thermal image is particularly useful in detecting local overheating in electrical equipment caused by dirt loss connections, short circuiting, or substance in three-phase power supplies. Alternative for open up inspection. Condition assessment of machinery part. CAP. The CAP survey is very extensive and requires support from crew on board. Our survey checklist describes details of the test. Please especially note the following test that might influence the operation of the vessel. Main engine test. The engine should run under steady condition at maximum load, 
minimum 80% during performance measurements, indicator cuts must be in order. The bridge control, control room control, and emergency local engine side control to be tested. Alarms and shutdown functions also to be tested. Examples of applied CBM techniques and methods. Monitoring machinery condition by analyzing lubricating oil allows the engineer to identify the presence of metallic wear particles carried within the oil stream. These metallic particles are analyzed by type to determine which part of the machine is wearing and by using trending drain analysis and other techniques to give an indication of the severity of wear. Oil analysis provides information on the presence of increase in foreign substance, such as water, dirt, salt, fuel, and so forth which can degrade the lubricating properties of the oil and cause early machinery failures. More sophisticated monitoring is necessary for reciprocating machinery. For example, diesel engine peak pressure curves give information regarding the overall Sealing between liner and piston rings. The balance of the engine and the condition of the fuel injection system. Let's go to surveys carried out by chief engineers. During the period of class, regardless of the type of surveys carried out by the chief engineer, at least 50% of all identical machinery is to be presented to a surveyor of the society in such a way that he is fully able to ascertain the condition of the machineries. Parts which have been replaced owing to wear, defects or damage are to be kept on board until they have been inspected by a surveyor. Examples of applied CBM techniques and methods. A complementary approach for determining the condition of a machine is to use key parameter monitoring. In addition, a frequency analysis of the vibration signal enables the diagnosis of machinery problems. One of the most effective techniques for determining the condition of rotating machinery is vibration monitoring. All machines vibrate, and in many cases, a machine conditions can be judged by comparing the measured broadband or overall vibration with its normal and limiting values. Finally, to maintain class with the classification body and as an integral part of the classification process, surveyors are undertaking periodical surveys and an annual intermediate and detailed five years spatial surveys periods.
Condition Assessment of Machinery Park. Four gas turbines. Key parameter monitoring. Continuous monitoring and trend analysis of critical gas turbine operating parameters, including compressor condition, inlet and access, outlet temperature, delivery pressure, and speed. Power turbine, inlet and entry temperature and speed. Engine breather temperature, low cycle fatigue counter fuel oil analysis sampling and laboratory analysis of fuel quality log keeping of fuel records for low oil analysis inspection of magnetic particle detectors manual records and or automatic recording via debris counters in oil scavenge lines. Inspection of oil filters, regular sampling, review of analysis results, and testing of oil cleanliness. Vibration monitoring. Continuous monitoring and trend analysis of gas turbine rotor vibration. Boroscope and endoscope. Compressor stators, guide vanes, and combustion chambers, nozzle assemblies, and power turbines. Periodic inspection, intakes, and exhaust ducts, inlet guide vanes, compressor first stage gas generator casing, and auxiliary component. For steam turbines, low oil analysis, regular sampling, review of analysis results, measurements, Rotor axial position using permanent indicators and analysis of boiler water. Key parameter monitoring shaft of high pressure turbines, shaft and turbine rotor revolution, plant performance data, for example, steam conditions at inlet and outlet of each turbine boiler, condenser vacuum, sea temperature, and so forth. Vibration monitoring, turbine bearing housing vibration, periodic inspection, rotor bearings, thrust bearings, cufflinks and casing, axial expansion arrangement, Final low pressure and astern stage blading. Four auxiliary diesel engines. Key parameter monitoring exhaust gas temperatures, engine cooling system temperatures and pressures engine lubricating oil system temperatures and pressures, turbocharger revolution and vibration. For low oil analysis of the generators, regular sampling review of analysis results. For intermediate shafting, In per periodic inspection, shaft surface, shaft bearing, and shaft bearing securing arrangements, shaft earthing device measurements, shaft bearing temperatures, low oil analysis, regular sampling, review of analysis results.
for propeller shaft, lob oil analysis, regular sampling, review of analysis results, assessment, intervals not to exceed six months, lag records of oil consumption, measurement stern show bearing wear down and stern show bearing temperatures. For auxiliary machinery, key parameter monitoring. Colors, color inlet and outlet temperatures. Heaters, heater inlet and outlet temperatures. For pumps, fans and compressors, vibration, vibration and pressures. For filters, differential pressure across filters. For main propulsion diesel engines, key parameter monitoring, engine screw shaft revolution, cylinder pressure power curves, scavenging air pressure, exhaust gas temperatures, engine cooling system temperature and pressures, engine lubricating oil system temperature and pressures turbocharger revolution and vibration, main bearing temperature and or crankcase oil mist densities. For loop oil analysis, regular sampling, review of analysis results. For fuel analysis, sampling at every bunkering, review of analysis results, periodic inspection, crankcase for signs of white or broken white metal, bed plate structure, string fit reference marks for measurements, crankshaft deflection readings and bearing clearances. Examples of applied condition-based monitoring CBM techniques and methods. Research of readings of each bearing. Readings for each bearing should either be taken simultaneously or with a short interval between each reading and at similar speed. Ideally reading should always be recorded at the normal maximum operational power, the propeller shaft and rotor speeds should be recorded at the same time as the vibration measurements. Measurements of turbine bearing vibration and other data as is specified above are normally required at regular intervals not exceeding two months. Vibration should be recorded on the forward and up bearing of the low pressure and high pressure rotors in the vertical, horizontal, and axial direction. The equipment used for gas turbine vibration measurement should be capable of determining vibration throughout the operating range of the gas turbines. <laughs> Example of applied CBM techniques and methods for, for oil samples are to be taken under service conditions on the stern tube a written procedure for sampling of propeller shaft lubricating system should be kept with the analysis record. For propeller shaft, oil analysis to include the following minimum parameters. Water content, bearing material, 
metal particles content and external contaminants. All aging resistance to oxidation. Propeller shaft condition monitoring is normally applied to oil lubricated propeller shafts fitted with an oil sealing lamp capable of being replaced without withdrawal of the propeller shaft. The stern bearing should have a facility to measure bearing wear down and temperature sensors to each should be fitted. Key parameter monitoring requirements for main propulsion plant are applicable when vibration characteristics indicate that there is no susceptibility to damage as a result of an even cylinder firing. Most classification societies may define specific requirements for vibration monitoring systems. For example, that the system should be letter A, able to display trends of overall vibration level over time. Letter B, display a frequency spectrum for each vibration signal. Letter C, each show what training has been given to engineering staff taking measurements. Key parameter monitoring may be continuous or periodical. <coughs> Confirmatory survey, annual audit and confirmatory surveys. Number one, an annual report covering the year's service is to be supplied to the society. It is to include the following information. The list of items of machinery and components and the procedures for their identification. The preventive maintenance sheets. The condition monitoring data, including all data since the last dismantling and the original reference data of the machinery check true condition monitoring. Any changes to the other documentation? Another one is full trend analysis, including spectrum analysis for vibration of machinery displaying operating parameters exceeding acceptable tolerances. The surveyor is to review this annual report or verify that it has been reviewed by the society. Confirmatory, confirmatory survey. Number two, the surveyor also examines that the personnel on board in charge of the PMS have the appropriate authorization. Number three, where condition monitoring equipment is in use, function test, confirmatory surveys, and random check readings are to be carried out as far as practicable and reasonable at the discretion of the surveyor. The description of repairs, if any, carried out to be examined any machinery part or component which has replaced by a spear due to damage is to be retained on board where possible. On this occasion, such replaced parts are to be submitted to the 
for its examination to the surveyor. Number five, written reports of breakdown or malfunction are to be made available. Number six, the maintenance and performance record are examined to verify that the machinery has been malfunctioning satisfactorily has been functioning satisfactorily since the previous survey or audit or if necessary, the necessary measures have been taken in response to machinery operating parameters, exceeding acceptable tolerances, and that the overhaul intervals have been observed. Number seven, <coughs> the purpose of this audit is to verify that the scheme is being correctly operated, in particular, that all items to be surveyed in the relevant period have been actually been surveyed in due time. A general examination of the items concerned is carried out. Confirmatory survey, the annual audit and confirmatory survey are to be carried out in conjunction with the annual class surveys. Once the planned maintenance survey system is implemented, the continued compliance with the requirements for checks, overhauls, and repairs were needed is to be verified by means of annual audits and confirmatory surveys in order to confirm the validity of the approved survey scheme system. Number 10 for confirmatory survey, after the satisfactory outcome of this audit, the surveyor confirms the validity of the PMS by endorsing the certificate of classification. 11, the surveyor performs a confirmatory survey of the items which have been surveyed by the chief engineer and decides which item can be accepted for maintenance of machinery items classification on the PMS list of items. This is the end of my video. Thank you for watching. You must have to watch my previous video, Continuous Machinery Survey Part 1, to complete your knowledge. Please click the subscribe button so that you will be notified on my next videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.